morning and welcome to the parish church of St Nicholas here in Kemerton as we come together today to say farewell to Mark.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We come here today to say farewell to Mark Swinfen Cottrell. We remember him before God and each other. We remember his life and commend him to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge. And then we will commit his body to be cremated, but also comfort one another in grief. This service is being recorded, it, uh, and so at the outset, on everyone's behalf, I welcome those absent friends who, for one reason or another, are unable to be with us uh, to share in this service with Fiona and her family today. And we're here to support particularly Fiona and Laura and George and their families, not forgetting the very newest generation. Support them in their loss of a husband, a father and a grandfather. So let's bow our heads and pray for them. And maybe you're also thinking about somebody else today because an occasion like this brings to mind perhaps someone who else who you're missing. And maybe around this church, there's someone else who's on your heart today as well. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything that you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of fresh life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may well have noticed, if you've already looked at your service sheets, and I'm sure you have, that there is a certain theme, I think I'm going to say flowing through it. And that's going to begin now as Alex comes and reads a poem called No, You Are Gone. From a daughter to her father, Now You Are Gone, is a poem written by Laura. She has asked me to read on her behalf today. <clears throat> I picture you at sea, curly hair, free, a cigarette, a mast, mooring lines are cast, coming, going, ebbing, flowing, sunshine, laughter, the ever after. Now you are gone, I picture you free, navigating on the eternal sea, the lonely star leading the way, setting sail from the busy bay. The stars, the moon, a Bob Marley tune, smoking, stargazing, forever trailblazing. One love, one heart, a mystical nautical chart. One love, one heart, a namaste as you depart. You now live in our smiles, the moon and the sky, a star shining bright, way up high. Sail only in the sunshine, rest never in the shade. Listen out, we are with you, and never be afraid. Thank you, Alex. Laura, a very poignant poem. And when we come to an occasion like this, it's good to kind of stop and think, what does the Bible have to say about things in general and things in particular? And 
I've suggested and we've agreed to have a reading which talks about the sea. Strange that, isn't it? It's Psalm 107. And maybe you're someone who in some way is involved with the sea and will recognise something of this. It's one that for me has a special memory because it's one that the Clavelli fishermen who I used to minister with down in Devon told me about what they saw at sea. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Some went out in the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. A reading that tells us something of the ways of the sea. One moment, enormous waves, Next moment, calm. Or maybe the other way round. Some years ago, some friends of mine learnt to pray. And they learnt to pray because they were caught in a tidal race off Hartland Point on the edge of North Devon, the very northwest corner of the county. They were caught because they were in a boat, didn't have sails, like Marx did, but the diesel fuel got stuck in the pipes and didn't get through just as they got to the point where the Atlantic met the Bristol Channel. A tricky place to be, and as my friend said, I've never seen so many grown men praying in all my life because they were scared. But they got back. They got back to Clavelli safely, in quite a small craft actually, for going out in the Atlantic swells. And I guess that Mark must have experienced something like that in his life, as he'd crossed the Atlantic, I'm not quite sure how many times, but certainly a number, wasn't it? And maybe he'd seen things that those of us who spend more of our time on the land, perhaps have not seen. But, whether at land, on the land or at sea, there are those of you here who know very well that God hears our prayer. There are some people who when they pray, it seems to make a difference. And I hope maybe that's a lesson that this psalm reminds us of. That of all the trials and tribulations of life, the big waves, the flat calm, the azure blue, or the grey of the sea, God's there and listening and wishes to bring us to a safe haven at last and to cast our cares upon him. At this time of the year, 
we're seeing fresh life springing up, aren't we? There are snowdrops just as we came into the churchyard. And the birds are ne- beginning to nest. We have a number of blackbirds queuing up to be fed each morning. And maybe that's what the Beatles were thinking about when they wrote this. Blackbird by the Beatles. If you know the words, sing along. We can provide them for you. Don't worry too much if you can't, because uh, I think uh, John and Paul can manage that on their own. So we're going to stand and we're going to hear Blackbird by the Beatles. Day is ended, dim my eyes, but journey long before me lies. Farewell, friends, I hear the call, the ships beside the stony wall. Foam is white and waves are grey, beyond the sunset leads my way. Foam is salt and wind is free, I hear the rising of the sea. Farewell, friends, the sails are set. The wind is east, the moorings fret. Shadows long before me lie beneath the ever-bending sky. But islands lie behind the sun that I shall raise ere all is done. Lands there are to west of west where night is quiet and sleep is rest. Guided by the lonely star beyond the utmost harbour bar. I'll find the heavens fair and free, and beaches of the starlit sea. Ship, my ship, I seek the west, and fields and mountains ever blessed. Farewell to Middle Earth at last, I see the star above your mast. We come now to the kind of changing course slightly. And we're going to think now about Mark. And uh, James, sorry, John is going to lead us in our thoughts. And as he speaks, I'm sure that it'll stir memories for you. Maybe as we meet together later on up the road at the Crown, uh, then there'll be an opportunity to chat about those memories. But for now, let's hear John. Thank you. Good morning. I hope you all can hear me somewhere between Winchester and here. I seem to have lost my voice, but we got the microphone, so good morning everybody. Mark Swinford Cottrell was a colourful character with a love for life as well as for his family and friends, and last Thursday would have been his 68th birthday. All of us here will have our own special memories of Mark and we collectively gain strength in coming to terms with our loss by being here together and supporting each other at this same time. In the many letters of condolence that Fiona and family have received, the recurring theme was for his love of life, particularly in his younger days. We will all miss Mark, but his was a life well lived filled with love and laughter in all the many places and people he visited. Of course, there's always sadness at parting, but until his illness, his life was a happy and fulfilled one, and certainly one for us to remember today. When we were growing up, we spent our time sailing in the summer or bobsleighing during the winter. We didn't have Playstations, Nintendos, Xboxes, no 999 channels on the sky, no video or DVD, no mobile phones, iPads or iPhones, no internet, Ooh, sorry, or internet chat rooms. But we had friends and we mixed socially to make new ones and Mark made many. I think we all know that Basil Charles from Mystique was one of Mark's closest friends and since he can't be here today, Basil would like me to read two poems on his behalf. Do not stand on my grave and weep. I am not here, I do not sleep. 
I am a thousand winds that blow, I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sun on ripened grain, I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning rush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circling flight. I am the soft star shine at night. Do not stand on my grave and cry, I am not there, I did not die. And this one from, Mark, from Basil to Mark personally. Fear is an illusion, adventure feeds the spirit. Rest in peace, Marco Polo. We've had our adventures, your brother Basil. Mark's engaging and genial character made him many friends and the perfect host. On one particular occasion, we arrived in St. Moritz late at night and went straight to our favorite nightclub at the Palace Hotel, which as many of you will know is called the King's Club. Mark ordered a couple of beers, and when Dante, the maitre d', came with the bill, it was for 500 Swiss francs. Mark said to Dante, words to the effect, gosh, your prices have gone up this year, Dante. To which Dante replied, it's your bill from last year, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Mark was trusted as a loyal and long-term customer. <clears throat> and they knew that he would be back. Mark and myself spent many years together sharing a house in London, and during our time we learned many things, but particularly that life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain, and we did just that, and we're always able to reconcile any differences that we had. Above all, we both recognize that life is not given to us as a freedom. It's a leasehold for all of us, but sadly Mark's was shorter than it should have been. I have happy memories of doing a number of transatlantic races with him years ago, where he enriched the lives of so many on board, and the sailing community, and this community too, will be the poorer place now that he's cast off for the last time. Fiona, George and Laura, he loved you all dearly and was proud of you. So be proud of him and remember him fondly. I'm sure you will. Thank you very much, John. And now a time of quiet reflection, but with some music. This is the sea by the water boys. Let's be quiet together.
who are here today and those who we miss because they can't be here. For those whose lives have been affected by him and shaped by him. <clears throat> for his hospitality. For his love of the sea. For his sense of adventure. And Lord, we thank you for what he received from you and shared with others, and for memories that are brought to mind today. And Lord, we know that your power can bring joy out of grief and respite after suffering life after death and we pray today for Mark's family and his friends for those who go to sea for those who sail the rivers or canals not far from here we pray for the work of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, the vital work that they do, and for those many volunteers who drop everything to go and save lives at sea. We pray that you would give all of us a patient faith in times of darkness and heal any memories of hurt or failure. Give all of us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that's left to us here on earth. To turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to life in that eternal haven. And so God of mercy, we make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who was able to still a storm with a word. Amen. <clears throat>
hope that uh, you know Beyond the Sea by Bobby Darin, because we invite you now to stand and to listen or sing, as you will. And after we've heard this, please would you remain standing. Confident of his victory, 
and claiming his promises, we entrust Mark to your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. <coughs> God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We have entrusted our brother Mark to God's mercy, and we now commit his body to be cremated, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who died, was buried and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Whoa. 
You know I won't 